Hello everybody and welcome to the box model demonstration. In this short video I'm going to teach you a couple things uh, about the box model. In fact, I'm going to show you how certain things work. Um, let's take a look at the HTML on the screen here. It's, uh, it was built using the template, right, the HTML template that you've learned to use in CTEC 122. In fact, right up here we have the page wrapper div, we have the header div, we have a, uh, a, the nav div here, which has nothing in it. We have a sidebar div, again, which has no content. But look down here at the content div, right, this div with an ID of content. It has three paragraphs in it, right? It has three paragraphs, which are block level elements, each with their own ID. Box underscore one, box underscore two, and box underscore three. I also have a CSS file link to this HTML, right, in the head section. And you, as you can see, I have some style information for the body, the header, the content, box one, box two, and box three. But before I carry on, look to the right here, right? This is what this HTML and CSS look like, right? This black border here going uh, across and down is being styled right here by this, by this uh, property and value pair, pair here in the pound content selector, right? Okay, three pixels solid black border. Now, let's start off in in the content div, and let's let's play around a little bit. Let's start off by adding 50 pixels of margin. So I'm just gonna type 50 in there, save my CSS, and refresh the page here. Oh, and look what happened, right? The entire content div, along with the paragraphs right inside of it here, moved, right, 50 pixels from the left, 50 pixels from the top, 50 pixels from the right, and believe it or not, 50 pixels from the bottom. And notice how everything moved, right? Everything moved together, right? Now, what happens if I add uh, 50 pixels, say, of padding in the content, right? What do you think is going to happen? Can you guess? Well, let me show you, right? Notice the, the space right here, right? And over here, watch this. Ready? Notice how the content div now has 50 pixels of padding on the top, on the left here, on the right, which you cannot see, and the bottom. So this is the content div. This is the margin outside the border. This is that black border defined here, right? Three pixels, solid black. Here we have the padding, and here we have our paragraphs, okay? So let's move on. Let's play around a little bit more. Let's go to box number one. Let's go to box number one and add margin of 20 pixels. So let me do that. Let's go here. Let me change that. And remember, we're operating on box number one. Look what happened, right? Box number one, right? The margin was applied over here on the left, over here on the top, over here on the bottom, and over here on the right. But notice, again, margin happens outside of the border, right? Outside of the border, okay? Now, uh, let's take a look at, say, um, what do we want to do here? Let's add some padding now. Let's add some padding of 20 pixels. And then I want to just recap something here. So I'm going to add padding of 20 pixels. Now, notice how around the content we now have some padding of 20 pixels, right? And we have the border and we have the margin. So just know that this box, which originally started off at a certain size, now has 20 pixels of padding, I mean margin, 20 pixels of margin here, a border, right, of, what does box one have a border of? Four pixels, plus um, padding, plus content, and on the right we have padding, border, and margin, right? So essentially, we are changing the actual width here, right? By by adding margin and padding, right? Same with the height, right? We're increasing, right, the height of this div when we add margin and padding. And if we did, in fact, change the the width of the border, it would actually uh, change the overall height and/or width uh, as well. Okay, so just keep that in mind.
Okay, so let's move on. Let's now play with box number two, right? Let's play with box number two. Let me scroll down here on the left hand side. And for box number two, let me add 30 pixels of padding. Okay, so 30 pixels of padding. Can you guess what's going to happen, right? Since we're adding padding, right, do you think it's going to happen outside the border or inside the border? Let's see. Look at that. It happened inside, right? Because remember, padding and ha happens inside the border. Now, since we increased the padding by 30 pixels, right, the overall width and height also changed by 30 plus 30. 60 pixels, right? 60 pixels. So it's actually larger now, right? So let's do something on box number three that's just uh, a little bit different, right? A little bit different. We've been playing with margin, right? That happens to be positive numbers, right? Positive numbers. Let's say we add um, negative 40, negative 40 pixels here, and we'll save it to box number three. What do you think is going to happen? We're telling it, right, that we want to apply minus 40 pixels relative to where it is right now. So if we do that, watch what happens. See what happens? It moved to the left and up 40 pixels, OK? It moved up and sideways 40 pixels. That's minus, right? Minus negative margin, as, as I like to say. OK, so I'm going to take that negative 40 off just so you can see. Uh, I'm going to put it back. OK, let's go back here. So everything is kind of back to normal before we added the negative 40 there, right? Um, and you can see it moves back into its, its prior position. OK, so let's change the border from 4 pixels to 10 pixels for box number 2. OK, so for box number 2, I'm going to change this to 10 pixels, right? So we're actually increasing the border all around from 4 pixels to 10 pixels. So that's going to be what? That's going to be what? That's 6 pixels bigger all around. So the width, right, and the height grew by what? 6 times 2, right? 6 here, 6 here. That's 12 pixels wider and 6 here and 6 there. 12 pixels higher, okay? Just just so you know that, okay? So the box is, is growing, right? The box is growing. Now, let's get a little uh, freaky with floats, okay? So I am going to add on box number two, right? I am going to, let's see, add, let me, let me see right here. Let me scroll over for a second. And I'm going to add right over here. Right, I'm going to add a float right. Oops, excuse me. Float colon right, semicolon. And can you guess what's going to happen here? Let's see what happens. Whoa, pay attention. I'm actually going to move this window out here and make it bigger so you can see. Notice that box number two floated to the right like we told it to. Okay, it's still maintaining its its uh, margin here, notice that. And what happened to box number three, right? Paragraph three here floated up, floated up in its place, okay? It moved up. Now, in one of the tutorials, right, in the making, I mean, in the welcome page tutorial, right, we told you about a little, a little um, property value pair, right, that can help you uh, put this particular red box back where it belongs. Does anyone remember what that is? Does anyone? I'm waiting. Hello? Okay. Um, so let me add on, um, should I add it on box two or box three, right? Should I add it? Uh, let's add it on box three, okay? So let's do this. On box three, I am going to add a clear both. Clear is the property, both is the value. So now when I add that and I refresh, the box three here is exactly where it should be, right? So this guy is floating to the right, and box three 
is no longer just floating up here, you know, taking the position where box two was, right? It's clearing the this div here in its entirety, okay? So why don't you play around uh, with the files that uh, that we provided in the Canvas page for this video, and you too can can play around with the box model. And if you have any questions, post them in the student question forum or ask your instructor. Have a great day.